Good morning. We pray that God will give you strength, healing, and peace. Invite a friend to attend our online virtual worship service every Sunday morning at 10.15 a.m. You can access our virtual worship service through YouTube. The power of giving comes from the heart, and your generosity is greatly appreciated. It will allow us to help families and individuals in need. You can give your donation, tithes, and offerings three ways. For all information regarding the conference call number and code, and for RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, uh, church, and all those who are listening out on this morning um, to the Word of God that are here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, first, I'd like to give an honor to God, who is the love of my life, to pastors George and Shirley Noble. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to for me to share this word on this morning. Hello, Restoration Bible Church. I love you. I miss you. Um, and I'm just excited to be here. Again, whenever I get to share the Word of God with somebody, I'm just excited. I love it. And uh, this is what uh, we are all as evangelists and disciples are called to do. Amen. So if you will please give me roughly around 7 minutes and 59 seconds of your time uh, to give you a few words of encouragement, I will be out your way. Today we're coming from Romans 8, 17 through 18, and then we'll skip down and come uh, from Romans 8, 28, and I'll be reading from the King James Version of Scripture. And it says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And lastly, Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And if I have a theme for this morning, which I do, it is working for my good. It's working for my good. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, 
We come to you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. We want to say thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Father God, for keeping us, Lord. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us for our sins, God, and all the times we have failed you. We pray, Father God, that you will open up our hearts, our minds, Father God, so we can have an understanding of what you're saying, Father God, and we can get a clear and new revelation from you, Father God. It's not new to you, Father God, but it would be new to our hearts, Father God. We pray, Father God, that it would not fall on a stony ground, Father God, but if it will fall in soil, Father God, that is rich, Father God, and wanting, Father God, to uh, to be uh, to have your seed, Father God, to spring up and, and spring forth life, Father God, so we can go out and share your word with this dark, Father God, and dying world. Lord, we love you, Father God, and we thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for loving us so much that you sent him to die on the cross for us, God. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is just wonderful. I, I, I love him. Hallelujah. So let's get right into it. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to briefly and for clarity's sake, give a little background to the scripture. And then we're going to work, uh, work our way up uh, to the main scripture for other text for this morning. While the apostle Paul had proved in the sixth chapter that his previous doctrine, which he was a Pharisee and he was unwavering in his belief in the law, gave no license to the believers to continue to sin. He still kept in view his main purpose of establishing their free justification. In the seventh chapter, Paul had continued on the same subject, declaring that by our message, by our marriage with Christ, we are delivered from the law as a covenant of life or death. Once more in the 8th chapter, he continues the subject of justification and resumes the discussion of the believer's assurance of his salvation, of which Paul has spoken in the 5th chapter, establishing it in new ground. He now draws the general conclusion that to them who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. Here in Romans 8, the Apostle Paul is talking about a life in the spirit in contrast to a life in the flesh. In this chapter, Paul tells us that we are no longer bound to the law and under the penalty of death because Christ has justified us by freeing us through his death and resurrection. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul in a powerful declaration says in verse one of this chapter, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Since God the Father does not condemn Jesus, Neither does the Father condemn those who are in Jesus. And because we are no longer in the flesh, but of the Spirit, God dwells in us. We have newness. We have life. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Isn't it an awesome privilege to know that we are in Christ and no longer condemned? Glory be to God. In Romans eight fourteen through 15, again for clarification of the text, Paul says that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Paul doubles down on the fact that we are no longer held captive to the spirit of fear in 2 Timothy 1, 7, when he says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear has caused and surge in hate and related crimes. Fear has caused governments to commit genocides on their own people. Even in church today, fear, not wisdom, but fear has caused churches to ban those who have not got COVID shots from worship. Fear causes us to give up. Fear causes us to rebel against God and do that which is contrary to the will and word of the Lord. Fear causes us to yield to the flesh and we know that in our flesh dwells no good thing. Paul testifies to this fact in Romans 7, 18 through 19, when he says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would do, excuse me, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Who tongue twister. Oh, but thanks be to God, to the most high God. Hallelujah. Whew. Who gave us his precious Holy Spirit. 
When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts and submit to him, we are no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. We are led by the Holy Ghost and in the Holy Ghost, there is no fear. In the Holy Ghost, there is no hate. In the Holy Ghost, there is no messed up thinking. In the Holy Ghost, there is power, love, and a sound mind to remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 17 through 18, this is our text for today, says, And if the children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs of Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen, the Lord himself is the portion of the saints' inheritance. God tells Aaron in Numbers 18 and 20, I am thy part and thy inheritance among the children of Israel. We are spiritual priests that God that have God as our inheritance. Hallelujah. The vision in God, excuse me, the vision of God and the fruition of God make up the inheritance that the saints are heirs to. My Lord Jesus. Christ, who is our mediator, is the heir of all things, according to Hebrews 1 and 2. In John 17 and 2, Jesus tells us that we who now partake of the spirit of Christ as his brothers and sisters shall, as his brothers and sisters, partake of his glory. As for our suffering, the reward of the saints present, present suffering is a rich reward. Our present suffering is a rich reward. Second Timothy tells us if we suffer, we shall reign with him. Yet if we deny him, he will also deny us. Listen, we are going to go through things down here. We are going to face obstacles and tribulations. We are going to face sickness and heartaches. But our suffering down here and at this present time will not compare to the glory which will be revealed in us. Christ suffered for our honor. And we are going to suffer. But our suffering is not like those who don't have Christ. Nor will we suffer in the end as those who live as if they didn't want or need Christ. And for the last, our last uh, verse, it says, And we know that all things work together for them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I realize things might not look good. I realize things might not feel good, but things are working for your good. Yes, I realize that friends and loved ones have gone home to be with the Lord. But as you run this race of life, like a marathon or the Olympics, you have a grandstand of cheerleaders. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, Jesus, and let us run with the patience that the race is, that the race that is set before us. The cloud of witnesses, the Bible tells us, are the Old Testament saints that came before us. But if I can use my spiritual and sanctified imagination, I like to think that my grandparents, uncles and aunties said, scoot over, Abraham, move over, Daniel. That's my Polly down there. I like to think that they're looking down on me, clapping and cheering, cheering me on and saying, you can do it. You got this. I know it may hurt, but you got this. You may be tired, but the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to those that endure to the end. Thank you, God. So just a little while longer, Polly, don't you quit. Eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard what God has prepared for you. Trust is working for your good. When God sent his beloved son to the cross to die so I didn't have to, that was God working it out for my good. When Jesus rode on a Thursday morning with all power, power to heal, power to save, power to justify us because we were weak and sinful and we couldn't do it. That was God working it out for our good. So don't be dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. That is God working it out for your good. God bless you on this morning. A few reminders before you go. Giving generously helps us help others in need. And we have three ways you can give.
If you would like to bless our pastors with a pastoral donation or love gift, you can send it through their cash app. For the conference call number and code, or for more information about RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. God bless, be safe, and we will see you soon.